What's happening, people? It's really heating up now. Things are happening at Chelsea Football Club. Welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy, with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really, really do. I really do hope that, friend. Welcome back to, of course, Chelsea News, the daily series here on the channel, where we reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, which is a lot, by the way, giving you my opinion on it. More importantly, asking for yours, Bruce Buck has stepped down. It has begun. The exodus, the great change of Chelsea Football Club, the Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Consortium revolution. Is Marina Granovskaya next? Is everyone related to the old regime going to go? We will find out. We will, of course, read Chelsea's statement on that. We're talking about Raheem Sterling again, which does look like a very, very serious transfer that might happen. Uh, ben Jacobs on Twitter giving an update on how Romelu Lukaku's exit is going to work. And, of course, news breaking yesterday. Uh, Jonathan Klaus in Ligue 1, the fullback who has a really high productivity rate, uh, being linked to Chelsea for a very affordable price, possibly to replace Cesar Azpilicueta. So much to get into, guys, today. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do drop a like on the content. It means a lot, and it supports your creator. So thank you for doing that. You are, of course, welcome to subscribe, should you choose to do so. Make sure that bell notifications icon is clicked so you don't miss an upload. Dude, it's going off, man. It's popping off. We're also going to look at the stats of Jonathan Klaus. So we've got those to, ready to show you. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a long ride. Now, I'm going to read to you now... <laughs> The statement from Chelsea regarding Bruce Buck, which I haven't read yet. I wanted to react organically and talk it through uh, you guys in terms of commentary. So this is coming from the official Chelsea website. Chelsea Football Club announced that Bruce Buck, who has served as chairman since 2003, will be stepping down from his role effective 30th of June. That's in 10 days time of time recording. He will continue to support the club as a senior advisor essentially eliminating his power as chairman and if he wants to be referenced uh or no, you know if Bowley and co want to ask him a question he answers i guess should he want to maybe that's like a sort of i don't know well, let's read let's read let's read during buck's chair um chairmanship chelsea solidified their position as one of the world's elite football clubs and a globally recognized brand followed by millions in that time the men's team earned 18 major trophies more than any other english club well, the English, uh, uh, sorry, while well, the Chelsea FC women won 12 major trophies, the club also grew its commercial revenue, significantly established world-class training facilities at Cobham, <clears throat> excuse me, and developed one of the best youth academies of football. All true. In 2010, Buck, H as trustee and chairman, helped establish the Chelsea FC Foundation, which supports a broad range of initiatives increasing youth athletics. He's done loads of good stuff. Let's read this quote from him. I am proud to have helped Chelsea realise great success on the pitch and make a positive impact in the community. Now is the right time to step down and let the new ownership build on the strong foundations we have in place. The owners have a compelling vision for Chelsea's future, and I look forward to helping them achieve it in a new role alongside our incredible staff, players, coaches, and supporters. Um, right, so another quote. Bruce has led Chelsea to a football club to the highest levels of international and domestic football, while also developing the most active social responsibility in sports, in projects and sports. So this is said by Todd Bowley. We thank Bruce for his service and the commitment to his club. He gone! Larry David has left the building. I... Look, I think he's probably done a great job at Chelsea. He's been an important figure in what has been an incredibly successful period for Chelsea Football Club. But I won't miss Bruce Buck. Um, he was the first to jump on the European Super League, something that I absolutely don't agree with. Um... And uh, yeah, he's gone. He's gone. Make that of what you will of that what you will. If I can speak English, Bruce Buck is gone. Will it be Marina going to Sky next? We'll have to see. Comment your thoughts on that down below. But that is seismic news for the club. Um, huge, huge news, of course. We are going to move on though. We've got plenty to get through. And we're going to jump on um, the next story, which is Romelu Lukaku, coming from Ben Jacobs, at Jacobs Ben on Twitter. A very reliable source throughout um, recent times for referencing Chelsea stuff. Of course, he covered the takeover very, very well. He, I don't know where this guy popped out of, but he um, seemed to get everything right. So we'll see it. We'll, you know, we will continue to reference him as a source. Uh, so he's saying here on Twitter, Romelu Lukaku will get his move back to Inter. He will get his move back to Inter. He'll get his move. 
Inter will pay a loan fee of 10 million euros plus add-ons. Not quite the 20 million, um, yeah, 20 million euros Chelsea wanted, but certainly a lot better than the 5 million Inter originally offered. Chelsea pushed for a player swap, but Inter refused to include Skriniar, Dumfries or Bastoni. Martinez was never a realistic possibility or open to the move. Sources from both clubs say things are close to being finalised and it's a case of when, not if now. Also told that Inter believe that Skriniar could can be sold in a more straight sale with PSG and Spurs interested. Also, Inter remain open to a sale. They ideally only want to lose one defender this window, even though their financial situation could still force more outgoings. Yeah, Inter have been, been in financial trouble for a while. Chief, One of the chief reasons why they try to sort of push Lukaku out in the end for £100 million. Chelsea see value in a loan, and Todd Bowley is keen to end Lukaku's exit saga and ensure it doesn't drag on through the window. This was always a priority, guys. This is what Fabrizio Romano was saying in the video and that I referenced in the video yesterday. He's like, chill out. This is the priority. We'll do loads of business. We'll get the signings in, but we need to sort this out first. And, and that's seemingly what's happened. Chelsea will now turn their attentions to Raheem Sterling. Although, Sterling is yet to decide on his future. CFC and uh, Man City are also significantly apart on a fee. This is interesting. Man City ideally want close to £60 million. Pff, spit take. Uh, but sources close to the club admit they may settle for a fee similar to Gabriel Jesus, which would put Sterling on the market for around £45 million. Um, possibly of add-ons. Uh, lo lots of negotiating to be done on a fee with Sterling, but there's a willingness on all sides. Sterling hasn't yet made any financial decisions, but is thought to be very open to a move to Stamford Bridge if a fee can be agreed. Uh, so let's reflect on this. First off, Romelu Lukaku... He's, it's got to be done. Uh, it's positive. Um, it's the only way thing that can be happened. Todd Bowley absolutely made the right decision making this a priority so this didn't drag on and affect other transfers and get in the way and bleed into our other business in terms of where your thought processes are. You want to be like, right, that's done. You don't want to like, organize stuff, your work stuff. You don't want like one thing hanging over and there's still some papers loose on your desk while you're trying to do other stuff and then people come in and go, yeah, but aren't you, isn't your head still in that which you haven't finished? You know, no, it's done, nearly. We want to get it done before we start other stuff, and that makes total sense. Raz Sterling, I can imagine him wanting to come back to London after being in Liverpool and then Manchester. He is a London boy. He gets the opportunity to join an elite club in Chelsea at an exciting time and be perhaps the main man, which he isn't at City at the moment, although he's been consistent for years. And, uh, you know, Chelsea, it's not a charity, like, you know, sympathy move. Chelsea have won the Champions League the season before last. They got to finals, you know, two finals. They outplayed Real Madrid. This is a serious team, Chelsea, and he will recognise that. Um, and, you know, he'll have English compatriots in the Chelsea team. Uh, let's keep going on Raheem Sterling and talk about Fabrizio Romano's tweet. Um, from last night. Raheem Sterling is Chelsea's top target as reported last Tuesday. Man City won around 55 to 60 million euros. 55 million euros isn't that much. Approach for... So yeah, there was an approach from Chelsea for 25 million plus add-ons turned down. Chelsea will be back with a bid soon as Man City are open to letting him go. Um, Man City won around 100 to 110 million euro for, excuse me, both Jesus and Sterling. Might be a bit ambitious. Um, the interesting thing here is the reports suggesting Chelsea offered 25 million euros in add-ons turned down. <laughs> Man City, so what's that? We'll give you 18 million pounds for prime Raheem Sterling. Look, man, this just really further highlights, and again, I'm not going to go over this so, again for too long, but we sold Eden Hazard, who, by the way, was two years older than Sterling, and pause. I am not for a second saying Raheem Sterling is the quality of Eden Hazard. Of course not. But Hazard was two years older and he too had a year left on his deal and he didn't have the British player tax where English players cost more. And we got 90 million. We ended up getting paid like 160 million pounds for Hazard. So Sterling isn't going to be nothing. He's not going to be 18 million pounds. If Chelsea get Raheem Sterling for 45 million pounds, if he truly is a you know, the priority target for Thomas Tuchel. He absolutely has earned the right and has deserved that um, opportunity to be afforded to him to acquire this player. We've spoken about this at length, friends. 
I think I saw Cy Phillips uh, citing some more stuff about oh, Cy Phillips, yeah, he's citing Fabrizio Romano again, speaking on this further, saying, look, he'll suit Tuchel's system well. It's the kind of player Tuchel wants. That's it's got to be enough for you, man. Um, you know, that's what you got. That's got to be enough. So if it is around like you know thirty five million, forty million with add ons, I think that's a good deal. Uh, let's again comment down below things on Raheem Sterling and moving quickly. Make sure you know you are you are locked in um, and have the the bell turned on because um, there's going to be so much updates on this. Look, man, let's um, move on. Uh, I'm referencing an article from the Metro, of course, just because it was there. But of course, everyone saw as news rotating around that Chelsea target Lunds right back John. Jonathan Klaus. Now, if you've watched me play FIFA, you know, I haven't for ages on Twitch, but Jonathan Klaus has an excellent FIFA card <laughs> and was lightning dangerous. We're going to look at his stats at the moment. He got the most uh, goal involvements in the top five leagues from a fullback, I think, uh, last season. Of course, it's Liga. Um, and he will not be first choice unless he plays alongside Reese James and Thomas Tuchel plays Reese James as a right center back and we know Thomas Tuchel loves playing Reese James as a right center back even though none of us like that i mean he'll be great there but we feel you know i'm not going to speak for you but i and many feel like that's wasting his best attributes but there might be instances should we sign Jonathan Klaus, where they played together, but I think he'll be a deputy to Reese Flames. Chelsea are considering a move for Lance right back Jonathan Klaus. According to the reports in France, Tuchel needs to bolster all areas of the defence ahead of the new season following the departures of Rudiger, Christensen, with both Alonso and Aspilicueta could also leave, of course. Aspilicueta was adept at covering for Reese James on Chelsea's right flank, but according to the French newspaper Le Voix du Nord, um, the club are targeting Klaus if the Spaniard departs. I think that'd be quite a good replacement, actually. The, the report claims Chelsea have been monitoring Klaus's performances in League 1, with Lens opening, uh, open to selling the 29-year-old if the 10 million euro valuation is met. £8.5 million pounds for Jonathan Klaus, 29 years old. as a £8.5 million pounds for a rotational, productive wingback. Sounds pretty good to me. We'll look at his stats in just a moment, of course. Klaus, Klaus was Lunz's standout performer in Ligue 1 last season, providing 11 assists and scoring five goals in the league. So 16 uh, league goal involvements from fullback. Uh, pretty good. The right back was also named in Ligue 1's team of the season, which included Marquinhos, you know, Saliba and Mbappe and stuff. He's in the team of the season. 8.5 million pounds. Uh, Klaus is just one year remaining on his contract with Lanz, and that's why he's so cheap, and, pl and uh, has no plans to extend his current deal. He has attracted interest from Marseille and Atletico Madrid, as well as Chelsea. So, you know, teams want him. During an interview with RMC Sport in May, Klaus... <laughs> Klaus was asked what club he dreamt of joining. He said... I haven't, I haven't heard this yet, by the way. Since I was a kid... It's Chelsea, and it remains Chelsea, he replied. Oh, he's a Chelsea fan, of course he is. Klaus has been capped four times by France's national team. Didn't know that's good. And is pushing to secure a place in Didier Deschamps' squad for the World Cup. Well, let's have a look at his stats then, man. Bing, 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 bing. So this is what he's good at in his scouting report on FB Ref, of course. What he's in the highest percentiles for. So he had, takes a lot of shots from free kicks. I guess, like, if Marcus Alonso's gone, that's another player that can replace him for that. Uh, he takes corner kicks. Uh, <laughs> He takes corner. He's top top 99 percentile for corner kicks, in swinging kicks, out swinging kicks. Basically taking corners on both sides. He's the corner taker. Um, bowl accounts. But this is what's more important because he's still in the top one percent. Shot creating actions, goal creating actions, uh, goal creating actions, pass live, uh, aerials lost, which doesn't seem good, and then key passes. Um, yeah, man, this is like pretty impressive. Um, to me, that sound that looks like pretty good. Interceptions, he's still pretty high for assists, goal and assist. Um Yeah. To me that's uh that looks positive, I think. Um what do you think though? I mean eight point five million pounds in team of the season, um France International. People won't be like, you know, th this is the kind of stuff we need. If we've got all these players going out, like Alonso, Azpilicueta, and, you know, centre-halves and stuff, the we the we need squad players. We don't just need superstars. We we're going to play in a lot of competitions. Again, Chelsea will fight to the end in probably most competitions, hopefully touch wood. You need a good squad, man. And 
Jonathan Klaus looks like a really ideal player. What do you think, though? Comment down below. Please do get into the um the comment section. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Express those. F uh, thank you for all your interactions, like um you, you know your likes and shares and subscriptions and whatnot. Of course, things are moving very fast, so make sure you keep it locked to Football Therapy. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Peace. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I laugh me bitch